Okay, so you may have clicked on this video because you're like real gay and real sad. Maybe you're in some sort of gay purgatory where you've come out and it hasn't gone well. So you don't really know what to do next. Maybe you're in that climactic point in your life where you haven't come out yet, but you really want to. Or maybe you have come out and you just want to watch a gay ass video. In that case, hey, what's up? Or maybe it's none of the above and you just want to see my beautiful face. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to answer a bunch of questions that you guys sent me across many different platforms. Timestamps are going to be down below for every question that I answer. So if you don't care about some tea, you can skip to the next one. Do some people still call you female pronouns? If yes, is it annoying? No, I did it. <laughs> Hi, I'm speaking to you from the past, and this is my last day with this hair. Uh, I would thank God, but God really had nothing to do with it. It was all science. Um, Newton, Isaac, who are the other ones? Hamilton, thank you. But yeah, it took a long time to get to this point with different gender-affirming medical interventions. Tell everyone how good of a patient I am. A horrible, horrible patient. Don't ever let this person come into your clinic. Am I the best boy ever? As well as like the mental side of it and like the confidence of like, yeah, hi, affirm me, call me he him. Gay marriage has just been legalized throughout America. But more importantly, I got all my hair cut off. My voice has definitely gotten deeper. And I was like, dude, I so pass as like a cis guy to you. Fun ways to tell people that you're questioning your gender identity. Go to Walmart and call your parents. You tell them, mom, dad, I shoplifted, I'm going to jail. They're gonna be like, oh my God, our child, a criminal mastermind. This suburban life we built for ourselves is toppling in front of us. And then mid freak out, you go, just kidding, but I may be a boy. And if you don't love and support me, I have Shrek 2 on Blu-ray and DVD in my hands right now and I will walk out that exit, don't test me. Would you rather me go to jail or go to gender therapy? I just- Would you rather me be a convict or be an out sensation like Miles McKenna? We just- <laughs> Let me know if you try it and also don't tell anyone I told you to do that. That's a fun way. I feel like that's something that would play out on Drake and Josh. Was it hard to come out as trans? Yes. For me, I think it was really hard coming to terms with, not even coming out, but just coming out to myself, even with my gender identity. Because my coming out initially with my sexuality went really not well. Things have been really hard for me. Um past year. So many of you guys are so cool and I get pictures like every day of people like cutting their hair and that's crazy because there are so many people that I know like personally that do not accept me and that's cool that uh, some people are okay with me. I still feel like uh I guess pain because of everything that happened with my parents. Like I'll randomly like flashback. Like I'll randomly have like legitimate flashback. Like it's just a lot like so it just sucks because I feel like I've lost two people. I feel like I've lost two best friends. My first ever coming out experience with my sexuality was a parent asking me, do you have the gay? And me being like, bitch, yes. And immediately being hugged by them. And I had been questioned before by family members if I was LGBTQ+, because look at me. And <laughs> when I was a child, I didn't have the language to put to how I felt, because I didn't have any representation around me at all, so I wouldn't know what trans was or what queer and was. And as I got older and I started finding all these words that described me, they were all very bad. In the eyes of God, in the eyes of my parents, and I was like, okay, so we can't come out. And mind you, this parent was very vocal on voting no on gay marriage, like five years prior. So I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna come out and it's gonna go well, you know? But I did. And I was immediately hugged by them, and I was like, whoa. Didn't expect this. As they were holding me in their arms, they go, I will always love you. And I was like, how did this- What? I was like stressing for nothing. Obviously I'd be accepted. I'm an only child. They have no choice but to love me. I'm the only one. <laughs> and then right after, they go, but you're still going to hell. And now my dumb ass like just starts laughing because I was like, that's so funny. Like day one, the first hour, we can make jokes. I'm like, that's so, yeah, let me burn daddy. Like, yeah. So I start laughing and uh, they go, why are you laughing? I'm being serious. And then just starts talking about the Bible and Jesus and, and my entire world changed after the Fire Nation attacked. I remember one of my first thoughts was like, wow, now I can never really figure out my gender identity because this didn't go well, so I, I don't want to do this again. And this, not just being like coming out, but like being vulnerable and honest about me to people that were really close to me. So I was like, cool, never want to do this again. Um, <laughs> oh, when I'm vulnerable, it's met with like anger and people don't want to be around me anymore. You know what I mean? It was like a bigger thing for me, I think, that I really had to dismantle as I got older. So I realized a lot of people don't know 
my sexuality. I like big boys, itty bitty boys, Mississippi boys, inner city boys. I like the pretty boys with the bow tie. Get your nails did, let it blow dry. I like a big beard, I like a clean face. I think a big reason for that is after my first year of transitioning and like coming out, I really took a step back from like really being on the internet and really showing my life. Like I never did like tea update videos until like a year and a half later. I obviously was going through a lot like physically transitioning, emotionally transitioning, and socially and having to like come out again. And also doing it in a very public way. So it was just like a lot of tea for me. So I really took a step back. So I thought I would just explain it to your faces. So yeah, obviously I'm a guy. I have a transgender experience and I identify as queer. A really common thing with a lot of trans people that I actually experienced is your sexuality changing through your transition. Before not only coming out as trans, but like socially transitioning and people seeing me as me, I was only dating girls. And I also think a big reason for that is because I was always the more masculine one. But being with a girl not only affirmed my sexuality, but really affirmed my gender identity, even before I had the language to put to it. Basically, it makes sense that I would feel more masculine being with a girl than being with a guy who wants to be with a girl. You know what I'm saying? And since transitioning and being seen as a guy, in my dating pool, I have started to date guys, non-binary people, masculine people in general, as well as girls and feminine people. So I identify as queer because I've dated a spectrum of humans. I think a lot of people identify that as pansexual, which just isn't a word that I've really used to identify for me. And also just in my community of being a 20 something year old in Los Angeles, my community tends to use the word queer more than they do pansexual. So that's just the word I use. I feel like everyone chooses a label, not only that fits them, but is also used around them. But yeah, I've dated girls, I've dated guys, I've dated people that identify in between. If I'm dating you, then you know. <laughs> I really needed to focus on me transitioning and not me communicating every little change about me to like other people. I know Gigi Gorgeous is someone who can speak to this as well. But yeah, I just like who I like and you pride. How do you distinguish between gender identity and gender expression? Honestly, I think time. I think just growing as a person and seeing what you gravitate towards and kind of what pulls you. I can tell you so many details of my childhood where like, all my friends were guys. We had a dress code in my elementary school and I only wore the boys' uniforms. I never wore the girls' uniforms. I used to bring a hat to school and shove my hair up in it and tell people to call me Brad. Like <laughs> that for me point to my labels of like being trans masculine and being queer. But I know so many other kids could have that same exact journey but be like, oh, I'm a lesbian, or oh, I'm agender. I actually interviewed a gender therapist a few years ago, and one of my questions was, when do you know that you need to see a gender therapist? And their answer was, I think it's safe for anyone that is having something happening with their gender. And maybe the most descriptive way they can say it is like, something's happening with my gender. Because not everyone has the language, not everyone has clarity. And then we have something, and we only talk to ourselves, we're only having an internal dialogue. We're very rarely propping ourselves up. And so it can be beneficial to have some place to go and, and to say like, these are the things I'm feeling, these are the things that I'm thinking, and to have a response that's not oppressive. And yeah. I have clients who are like, I don't think I need to transition. I'm like, that's fantastic. And so sometimes working through false ideas and false pretenses about what therapy is, especially therapy that's sort of coined as gender Seeing therapy. Seeing a gender therapist doesn't solidify, like you need to go on hormones, you need to get surgery. Like, you are this. It's a safe space to freely talk about who you are and work this out. And there's so many resources too for gender therapy. I'm actually doing a series right now with AT&T called Young Heroes. And the first episode is already out where I visit the Encircle House in Utah. Welcome to Encircle. I love it. It's like the Rainforest Cafe, but like, make it gay, you know? <laughs> a safe space for kids to go after school and literally get free gender therapy if they want to. There's also online resources like pridecounseling.com. So yeah, if you feel like there's something going on with your gender, you are not alone and you can talk to a professional. How do I figure out my pronouns? Tell a few close friends that you want to start using a certain set of pronouns and trial it out, see how it feels. I think if someone says my pronouns wrong, I'm just gonna start saying their pronouns wrong. Like if your name's Lucy and you're talking shit, I'm just gonna start calling you Gerald. I'm just gonna call you Geraldo. I'll tell you what, it's gonna get real old real quick, Geraldo. It's gonna get real old real quick. How long have you known that you were trans? I think if there would've been representation for me at a really early age and it would've been a safe space where it's not like you're going to hell if you're trans, I think I would've been going by he, him since like kindergarten. I think as a kid, I had a really classic like transgender journey where I was really 100% me and then as I got older and it stopped being tomboy and athletic, the people in my family and around me started getting scared. But the way I was acting either would mean that I was gay or I was transgender and that was a big no in this community. So when I entered middle school, it was really black and white. Like, why are you not wearing dresses? Why do you still want your hair cut short? And at 13, 14, I'd be met with a lot of emotion from family members, either being super angry at me for the way I was acting or even to the point of like, being in tears. So that was a really scary thing for me. So we like bottled that like real, real good. <laughs> From the age of 14 to just about last year, I tried so hard to be what I thought girls needed to be 
Because I was scared. I thought that I couldn't be this and I thought I couldn't be comfortable being this. Because of the people around me and I thought this would hurt other people. Because they wouldn't understand it. Which should not be a thing. I am the happiest now that I've ever been just by not giving a f Until I got older, I started making friends in the space, I started getting the language, and I'm like, you know what, I just wanna be the most me, no matter what anyone says, because this isn't, this isn't working. You're not gonna please everybody. You're not gonna be best friends with everyone. Bottom line, make sure you're your best friend. Make sure you like yourself, because when you do, then all the good people are gonna come out the woodworks. But if you're being someone else, you would never find those people. I've had a nose reconstructed job. I've had my cheekbones risen. I've had a chin implant and breast implants. Yes. Something like it is. I feel like the part of my life that was a secret is now closed. Okay. I can close the closet door, there are no more skeletons in there, and I'm as free as the wind that's blowing out on this beach. <laughs> it's just right. Not everyone who's transgender does gender affirming surgeries, but I did. <laughs> I'm four weeks and five days post op today. I had to get just one full scar because of the skin that would be extra in the middle. I think you did a great job. My dysphoria is off and on, and I don't know how to identify, and I don't want to be wrong. Being wrong is like the scariest thing. I mean, I went through those same fears with like my sexuality and with my gender identity. I was like, what if I'm wrong? Good advice that I was told is that identities are kind of like shoe sizes. Yes, I was a size five shoe. Now I'm a size seven. Doesn't mean I was never a size five but I couldn't get to being a size seven unless I was a size five. My advice is always just to live in the moment and be your authentic self, whatever that means to you. You don't need all the answers today. Wear what you wanna wear, love who you wanna love, be referred to as what you wanna be referred to as. Definitely seek community and gender therapy if you're wanting to like progress and be like, I wanna get on hormones or I wanna do something to like alter my form. I think anything in the medical realm, you need to be supported with professionals and people to help you really sort out what's going on until you make any physical changes. And I think with time, you'll be done cooking and know how to define yourself for other people. Cause that's really what labels are. You're really packaging yourself up in a nice way to give it to someone else and be like, this is who I am, this is what it but is. But on a basic level, you wanna feel comfy in who you are. And that could change day by day with what you're gravitating towards with your hair or your clothes. My advice is to keep growing into your shoe size, keep living life. And there's so many resources out there to help you really figure it out and pin down who you are with like gender therapy. Life is all about growing and character development. Sometimes you don't know things from day one. Sometimes you gotta meet certain people and have certain experiences. And you're like, oh, I don't like this, but I like this. Or, oh, this makes me feel weird now, so I'll adjust. My family always uses my dead name and old pronouns when talking about past me. Hell, for me, this is all about communication and setting boundaries with those around Just you. Just as simple, can you refer to me as blank when Whenever you're talking about me, even though I was not seen as blank back in middle school, it really triggers me. It really freaks me out. It really makes me feel uncomfortable when I hear that name, when I hear those pronouns, and you're talking about me. I'm going to go see my mom right now, who I haven't seen since I was pre T. Um, I told her, like, hey, you gotta call me he, him, or Miles, or nothing at all, because I, like, that's, that's just what it is. And she said that she'll try which is all you can ever ask. Ah, wish me luck. What do you think about genders other than he, she, they? Do you see them as valid? People may get mad at me, but you know what? Fight me. I don't care. I don't care what you do. Mainly because like we're on the internet and like I don't know you. And like I'm not your gender therapist. I'm not your doctor. What you're doing with your life and your journey like doesn't affect me like at and all. And I get it. I get why everyone's pressed because you see someone identifying as something that you don't identify with, right? And like you've done the gender affirming surgeries. You've cried to your parents. You've done the thing, you've been misgendered, maybe you're in a space where you're not safe and you have to be stealth for like safety reasons. So seeing someone identify as something that's like outrageously different than you <laughs> will show people like in the cis and straight community what being trans is and you're like, but that's not me and then the people are gonna see that and they're gonna start talking to me and thinking that's this, but like I'm not that. So it makes sense why like everyone's pressed and I get that, but I think also being in a space where like I'm 23, um, like I'm an adult, I'm not in school anymore, I'm not in spaces where like people are gonna like see me and like have preconceived ideas of like what trans is, I pass everywhere I go. So someone identifying as something that's like so different from me like doesn't affect me at all because I'm not in these spaces like in a different part of the country or a different part of the world that isn't super accepting. Or in a space where I'd ever have to to, like tell someone about my trans identity if I didn't want to and like need to be affirmed by them. Mm -hmm. Like I was when I was first coming out and I wasn't passing. So I get it, I get why people are mad. I just am not in a space where I am affected by what anyone else does. And like that's not my fight. Like my fight isn't to figure like, out what is trans and like define it for people. My fight is to have the kids who are like me and really scared to come out and not in like accepting environments feel support 
know what their resources are, know what their rights are, and blossom into their own, whatever that may be. You know? I don't know, I just don't get mad about stuff that doesn't affect me because people have been mad at me when it didn't affect them. So like, I would never wanna put that sort of hurt on another person, cause like, I know the weight of that. You know? I don't know if that's a good enough answer, but that's my answer. <laughs> How long did it take for you to get comfortable with your chosen name? Immediately. And I mean, it wasn't just like one day I like wanted to get my hair cut short and the next day I'm like, maybe I'm a boy and like I should change my name. <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> I changed my name when I was 21 years old. I first started thinking about what like, if I changed my name when I was like 16? And then I started really thinking about it when I was like 18, 19. And then I met people who had changed their names and like they didn't die because of it. And I was like, awesome. You gave me the strength. I'm gonna do it for me and like take that leap and like hopefully everything works out. And it did. And we went through every masculine name in the book until I settled on Miles Aaron McKenna and then everyone took me to Starbucks so they could write it on my cup. 